Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks. And about a week ago, I had someone reach out to me and ask me how to set up a web page similar to what you see on your screen right here. And uh, actually, they wanted to duplicate what you see on your screen right here. And so I shot two videos real quickly showing how in the past I would have normally done it, where you have a top section like this that would have this colored background in it. And then you'd have another section below, and you just push the image up over the top of the upper section. And so like I said, I have two videos I shot on that. I'm gonna show you that after this introduction. But then I started to look at this image more and I said, what is there about this image that is just so perfect? Now we all know the rule of thirds. We all know the golden ratio. But I still looked at it and said, yeah, those things apply, but how do you get this image over the other and lined up in such a way that it, I mean, it just, it just looks perfect. And so that's what the last part of this video is about. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to, I'm going to play the two videos I shot for them the other day to show them the basic way of setting this up. Then I'm going to go through a little bit of teaching on what is the rule of thirds, what is golden ratio, and then I'm going to go through a bunch of examples of images and web pages and the stuff that I built out and show you how it works in web design to be able to line these things up. And at the very end, what we're going to end up with is what I did right here, which is to create a formula essentially to show you exactly how to figure out how wide the background part should be, how big the images should be, and exactly how much spacing there should be on the side here in order to get everything to line up perfectly the way you want it. So first off, we'll go to those videos and then we'll come back for some additional training. Okay, Michelin or Michael Lynn, however you pronounce that. Um, let me show you how to do this here. Now I'm gonna show you one way that does not involve any CSS code at all. This isn't necessarily the way I would always do it, uh, but I could probably show you a dozen different ways to get this exact same effect, depending on what you're going for. My point and my comment was, everybody in that group, the first thing they say is, oh, go to Adobe XD and build it there. And then you basically get a whole bunch of pictures that all look the same. And there's no, I mean, frankly, for me, there's no reason to even use ClickFunnels then. Just go buy something cheap. If all you're going to do is pop an image into it, uh, don't don't use something uh, like ClickFunnels even. Uh, but here's what I did to make this work. So I got just an empty section up here just to give us some white space. And then I have another section here. And I'm going to set this one to wide. Now, again, if I were doing this myself, I'd do a lot of HTML or a lot of CSS code in here, but I'm going to use purely native uh, ClickFunnels functionality. So we got our top padding and our bottom padding. The only reason I put this at 300 is just to give us a bunch of room here because I don't have a row in here. I don't have any elements. So there has to be something here to take up this space. So I just put a bunch of padding top and bottom to do that. And then otherwise, I have nothing here set for now. I will make one change in there. Then I created another section down below this. And I took out all the margin and the padding except the bottom padding. I did that again just to give us some space down here at the bottom before you got into the other junk I have on this page. And then otherwise, I think that is it for this for right now. Yeah, that's it. So then into the row, we will go. And again, you can see how tight it is because I took out all the padding, all the margin, all the everything. And then I dropped in an image in the right hand column. And in that image, I floated that image to the right. Okay, so now we got all the elements in here. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to take this image and we want to move it up 300 pixels. So I'm going to put in minus 300. And so it's going to push that entire thing up. So what I did is I came into the section and I basically pushed this one section up over the top of the other section. So you can put this up as far as you want. So let's say we want to go up a little higher. Let's make it even like 500 pixels. And so that's probably closer to looking about, you know, similar to what you got here. 
Um, so we just push it up there like that. And now what we need to do is because if you look at your picture, you got this blue or whatever purplish color all the way off to the left. And then you got this gal here, but we got some white space on the side. So that's what I'm trying to duplicate here. We're going to have white space on the side, but we want this blue pushed all the way over to the left. And you could go maybe a little bit wider. What uh, what did I have here? I have this set as wide. Well, you can't go full page because that takes up the whole thing. You can go wide or again with a bit of CSS, you can set a specific width on this if you wanted to. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come into this top section here. We're gonna go to advanced. We're gonna come down to float and we're gonna tell it to float that entire thing to the left. So it floated it to the left and what you're gonna see happen is it pushed this lady down to the bottom, all right? In order to get her to come back up to the top, we need to adjust this section again. But what you're gonna find is you can't find how to get into the section. So you gotta come up here to the top, go to this section here. So you should probably do this in reverse order. Do the second section first and then do the uh, upper section. And we're gonna float this to the left as well. And that's going to pull her right up there into that space. Now, you might say, okay, well, I don't want her quite there. Maybe I want to move back over this way a little bit. Now, again, because once we get in here, we're going to lose our ability to uh, pick up on some of these elements. But luckily, inside of ClickFunnels, we can just come down here, go to Manage. We're going to come down to that image element right here. And so I had her floating to the right. Let's just now float her to the left, get her back in there a little bit more. And again, it's one of these things where you just got to kind of play around with it and get it to line up right. So this whole thing should probably come to the right a little bit more, which means that I'd have to go in here and set a specific width on this background and then just move her over accordingly. But for a real quick, simple, I mean, seriously, take you a couple minutes to set this up. That's how you can get that overlapping all built 100% natively right inside of, of uh, ClickFunnels. Okay, I want to show you one other way to do this that involves one line of CSS code, and I'll explain that to you when we get there. And otherwise, it's actually much simpler than the other way I was showing you. So we can come in here, because it mostly because it doesn't involve those floats. So we came in here to our top section. I removed the background color of the section. I removed all the padding because all of the color and the padding is going to go into the row itself. So we have the settings for the row. I made that blue. I made the top padding, top and bottom padding, the 300. And what I did is I took out the, or I made the width of it only 75%. And then I floated that to the left, whereas here that floats it to the right, this floats it to the left. So you can square that down, float it to the left-hand side. And now normally what you would have is you'd still have some space over here. And I'll show you with the CSS, how we take care of that space. But then down here on the bottom, all we're going to do is we're going to take this section down here. We're going to leave that 200 bottom padding because that was just to give us a little space at the bottom. And now we're going to put in our minus 500 and it's going to pull it up and it's not going to pull it up as far as you would think it should pull it up. But when it renders out, it looks just fine. And uh, so now we pulled that up our 500 pixels. And let me show you what the end result is. This is what it looks like at the end where you got that nicely over the top. And I think actually that turns out really nice the way that looks like that. You could put a little content over here if you wanted to, and that looks really nice. And so the real trick to this is one simple line that basically everybody who's been in ClickFunnels for any period of time knows. And, and again, the problem is, is, let me actually just turn the code off and I'll show you what the problem is, is you always have this, this, this uh this padding over here it would that is native to click funnels and so in order to get rid of that padding all you do is you come in with this one little simple line of css code and you grab a hold of the css id selector from your section so you come in here you grab a hold you click on the gear you come down to the hashtag you grab a hold of that css id selector and then you drop that into your into your custom CSS. How you would get in there is you go to settings, you go to custom CSS. I just made myself a little fancy thing to open it up. And then you go space, and then you type in period, small c, the word container, capital I, the word inner. So container inner, 
and then you put on your little left curly bracket. You put a little curly bracket down there, two lines lower. And then all we're saying here is instead of whatever width they had, which is like 80%, we're saying let's give us a width of 100%. And because we had already told that uh, that row to float all the way to the left and only be 75% wide, that's why we get what you're seeing in the background here is floated to the left and only 75% in width. And so that's how you do it. Like I said, it's one simple line of CSS code and it's an incredibly powerful line of CSS code. So just make sure you keep that. That's how you do it. You put in that and it'll float them all to the, um, to all the way out to the edges of the screen. Okay, so under the rule of thirds, what we're gonna look at first here is this image on the top right-hand corner. And you see it's divided into nine sections, and each one of those lines that you have on there is a third of the width or a third of the height of the image. And when it comes to the rule of thirds, it's more about how you crop the image than anything else. So this was most likely a much larger image, and then they came in here and they looked at it and said, okay, how can we crop this image? So we have the horizon line down here at the bottom is the lines up exactly on that lower horizontal one third. And then here, how can we have the trunk of the tree and the top of the tree all line up on the right hand third line. And of course, you can take this and move the tree over to the left. But in this situation, you obviously would not put the horizon on the top part because that just wouldn't make any sense. So so part of it is doesn't make sense. And part of it is how does it look once you apply the rule of thirds. Now down here at the bottom is a great example of this here. So you have your before picture that they're going to crop and you have this um, this object right here in the middle whatever you want to call it. this is tower let's just call it is right in the middle of the screen and you're going to see as we go forward that what's in the middle of the screen really is not the focal point of the picture at least it shouldn't be the focal point of the picture because people are so used to looking at things in thirds and what we're going to talk about in a minute and which is the golden ratio so when you crop this image what you want to do is you want to make sure that this tower this obelisk whatever it is here we want this on the in this case here we're going to put it on the left hand one third but the other thing you're going to see here is in the background of this image you can see here you have basically a horizon line where you have these two saddles where it dips down and then you have the sky above and again they move the image down so that horizon line right there would line up perfectly with the lower third and therefore you have a very nicely cropped image using the rule of thirds. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is known as the golden ratio. It's also known as a Fibonacci sequence and it even really applies to what are known as fractals. So let's just take a look at what the Fibonacci sequence is first. Fibonacci is some, some guy uh, about 1200 or not, something around that. He created this sequence and what he said is if you take these numbers and he was basically was mimicking nature when he was doing this and that's why it's so effective in design and he said if you take a sequence of numbers and you take the number zero and the number one and you add these two numbers together you get what you get one if you add one and one together what do you get you get two if you add one and two together you get three two and three is five three and five is eight five and eight is thirteen and so the numbers just keep adding on to themselves, and that's what you see down here at the bottom. We have one, one inch here. We have another one inch here. I'm just using inches as, as a thing to look at here. But we have a one by one and another one by one. We add those two together, then we get a two by two. And then two plus one is three, so we get a three by three. Two plus three is five, we get a five by five, and you see as you go around, but you're also going to see that it increases in size as we keep going out and out and out in greater and greater circles. And what they do is they look at the ratio of one to 1 1.618. And how that really lines up for somebody who's working in this, who's building websites, who's doing anything like that, is you want to look at this right-hand section here. This right-hand section will be, I'm sorry, this left-hand section, the pinkish background, like I said here, is 1.1. 1. 1 
1.618034. Just remember the first part here, which is the 618. So 618, 61.8% of the width of this object right here should be this left-hand box. That leaves us with 38.2 on the right-hand side. Well, now if we look at it the other way, if we were to flip this on its side, this top part now becomes 61.8 tall, and the bottom part is 32, or 38.2. So 61.8 and 38.2. So let's just, from now on, let's just say 62 and 38 makes it a lot easier. So, so we got 62% at the top. 38% at the bottom. So again, we split up this section here. We get 62% on the right-hand side, 38% on the left-hand side, and it just keeps spiraling down as we go into it. So in nature, where do we see this? And I'm sure you guessed already, the, uh, a snail shell would obviously be a perfect example, but you also have the human face, and you can see here, and it might be kind of small, but they have it rotated around her face, underneath her chin, and around up to her nose. And you can basically take this and turn it just about any way on the human face, and it will line up perfectly. The human ear is another great example. All kinds of different plants, and even like here's like in this picture here, you have the sun coming through in the back, and then you just wrap it around and see the sun becomes your focal point because it's right at that point where you have your, your 60, 62s and your 38s all come together and create this little vortex right here. And you're going to see that more and more and more. So here you have a constellation out in space. Again, another snail. You have uh, flowers. We have an egg down here. Here's actually a storm. So a lot of the storms, a lot of hurricanes, typhoons, whatever, they all form this exact same shape. And because it is the most common shape in nature, and apparently so common that Donald Trump has the hairdo that is in a perfect golden ratio. And in this interest, this is interesting here too. Just look at this picture. So the focal point of the picture is just this little tiny bit right up here where the guy is hanging off the side of the cliff, but it still is perfect golden ratio to come up to that point. Now I'd mentioned for a second fractals, and all fractals are is a just a series that repeats itself. So like the golden ratio keeps repeating itself forever. It doesn't always have to be necessarily the shape of the golden ratio like this one is here. It could be a shape like this that just keeps repeating on and on and on forever. That's what this really is about. And so let's take another look here. So here we got the Mona Lisa and we got the golden ratio over the top of her, come swooping right over the top of her head, right down perfectly onto her nose. Here we have logos, some of the big names, Twitter, Apple, Pepsi. And then we have here something we've all seen before, which is a blog. But again, look at it from the standpoint of golden ratio. On the left-hand side, you got your 62%. On the right-hand side, you got your 38%. And as you bring it back down and around, the National Geographic logo is right at the focal point, the vortex of our golden ratio. And then let's just take a look at a couple of web page examples or image examples. And in this case here, you can see exactly what it is again, comes around and brings our focus, our attention right to that spot. And again, up here, you got your 62% on the right, you got your 38% on the left, but then again, you have your 68 on the bottom, and your, I'm sorry, your 62 on the bottom, and your 38 on the top. And again, so it just keeps repeating and brings us into the vortex. And the exact same thing here, where the focal point is right up here at the top, and again, the vortex ends up right where we want it to be. The most important part is this big triangle here. And we're going to see a whole bunch of that in a minute. That triangle, I'm sorry, not triangle, that's a rectangle. So that rectangle right there is the most important part. Okay, so I grabbed that image off of the rule of thirds. And we take a look at it here. I got my grid lines on it just like they did. The bottom grid line is running right through the black area here. And then what I did is I overlaid this with the 
golden ratio, and I came in from the side here, uh, the 61.8%, and also down from the top 61.8%. And you're going to see the the intersection of the rule of thirds is like right here, and the the uh, center where these two lines come together is always just a little bit to the inner part of it. So it would be one here, one about here, and one about here, and we'll, uh, I mean about right here, and we'll look at that some more. But then what you can do is you can overlay the golden ratio image over the top of it. And again, all I did here is I just centered this on the page. I just dropped it on here. I'm using GIMP. I just dropped it on here. It automatically centered itself. And it just comes down and comes right down perfectly around into where the center of the tree is, which is exactly where we want it to be. Now let's take a look at another image here. And this one here, I actually, I was doing a presentation the other day with Andrea Peer, and she had it on one of her slides. And as soon as I looked at it, I says, oh my God, that is perfect when it comes to the golden ratio. And also then once you apply the rule of thirds, it's pretty good there too, because you got the rule of thirds coming down. And in this case here, it's got this white line in the background. I'm not really sure what that is, but the, the, the third, the one third line comes like almost right on top of it, also comes down right through her face down to her arm you got the table here which is the only real surface the only real thing that you have that goes all the way across the page is right here where this horizontal line is for the bottom third and then again our our um our golden ratio that lines up right on top of the computer, which is what you're going to, which is really the focus of this is her computer screen. And then again, if we turn on the image right there, again, we get the exact same thing and you see it. And this is what I saw initially in the picture. I was like, you just look at, look at this line here, this line from the back of her head up to these uh, pictures on the wall and then around like this. You could just see it just like come down around her arm and everything. And I just immediately picked up on that. And so here you do, you come down and you're round and then into the vortex, which is down here. And again, I can move this golden ratio thing around. But for the most part, what I did is I'm just leaving them centered on the page, centered on the image that we're looking at, just to show you that if you have a properly designed image, if you have a properly designed page, you don't have to be moving it around a whole bunch. It should really just cover everything immediately to the point where you can just see it and go, oh, okay, this is a good one. This isn't maybe such a good one. So now let's move into this here because what I want to show you is how this works for a bunch of images. Then we're going to look at some web pages, and then we're going to look at what is basically my final result of what I what I had over here. Let me pull that back onto the screen. What I had here, we're going to apply all of this to these images, and then in the last part of this video, I'm going to go through and show you exactly how to do all of this. So what I did in, in this is I came in and I just said, okay, well, we got our rule of thirds here, and we got our golden golden ratios, which are on these lines right here. And I wanted to kind of highlight it a little bit more so we could see it better. So I just put some red dots on where that intersects for the rule of thirds. And then I colored in blue where our lines are for the golden ratio. And then what I did is I said, okay, well, let's overlay onto this our, our golden ratio image. And so I did that up here at the top. And obviously, you could flip this around to any one of these four quadrants. But most of the time, you're going to have it either up here or up here. Even though with, uh, with the, the first two examples I showed, they were both down here at the bottom. Um, so we, we overlay it there. But then we want to look at this and go, okay, what is the most important part of this, this vortex here in the middle? Well, obviously, the most important part is going to be this little section right there. But it's pretty small, and you never really kind of hit it in that area. But this whole area in here, which will be highlighted in yellow in a minute, that not only does it take the center of the rule of thirds, but it also incorporates the, the vortex part here of the curved line. And then also this part above it right here, because anything that is in this section right here, which is just that last bit of it is the most important part and where you're going to find that most of the action in the image is happening. So I'll color that in there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to turn on the other way. So we got a horizontal 
and now we got a vertical way of displaying this. And again, that section that we're, we're concerned about is going to be right in this area here. So I will turn that green. I'll turn that one off for right now. So again, it's like that last section, that last rectangular area that we want to really hit on. And so there we have the most important parts is the colored in areas. So let me put that, let me put a picture on that for you. And so now you see where her face is and I will cover, uncover everything. So you're going to see here right away that the rule of thirds ends up basically right on her nose, coming right down between her eyebrows and then everything else is right around it. And we'll just start filling things in slowly on here just so you can take a good look at it. We'll do this one first and we'll put in the green and then we'll put in the second one and we'll put in the colors and there you go. It nails it perfectly on what is the focal point for this image because right now this image has one focal point and obviously it's her face and it's right here and it's perfectly positioned on this image perfectly cropped. So now let's take a look at this next woman here and here again we have our one third line intersecting right here right on her eye coming right down her cheek. That's very important. I mean, because where do people look, okay? When people come to a web page, when they come to an image, you know, anywhere it is, where do people look? We look at people's faces. We look especially at their eyes. So whenever somebody comes to look at, you have an image like this, people are going to look at where that eye is, where that face is. And the other thing is they're going to look at where this face is looking, so if you were to use this on something, you have to make sure you have her face pointing inward, pointing towards some text, pointing towards a call to action button. Always have the person, if they're turned sideways, looking towards what you want the person to read on the page. Even though this could be the number one focal point on the page, you want them looking towards, pointing towards, giving some indication of where the call to action is on the page. Now the other thing is like I said, so we got we got our primary focus right here, but then we also have a secondary point of interest or focus right here in the back with the the little beads and baubles and whatever in her hair. And then we have a tertiary action point right here in the middle. But what you're gonna notice is that this part of the screen right here, even though that makes this picture very interesting, this is not the focal point. The focal point is right here. This part right here, and you're going to see going forward, is generally speaking, this is like some of the least important real estate on the page, is the part right here in the middle, because our eye is not naturally drawn to that part of the page. And you'll see that when we start looking at dissecting some, some web pages that I have in a minute here. So again, we can turn everything on real quick here, and you're going to see all of the colors come right over the important parts, right over the focus area right here. And again, middle completely left open, even though that in this image is probably the biggest point of action. So now let's just turn all these off again. And I'm going to speed through this as much as possible because I'm sure you're all pretty smart and you got this figured out. And so I'll just flip on these two and you can see right here, we have the line comes right down her spine, right down her arm the whole way. For the, uh, the horizontal line comes right through the bridge of her nose, through her face. The uh, bottom line here is in a perfect alignment with how she's sitting, her arms, her legs, everything. And again, if we apply everything on top of it, you're going to see exactly what the focal points are. Now, in this case here, this next one, there's really two focal points on this page. First one, of course, is her face. She's looking straight on into us. And of course, this is a boudoir picture. And this was the kind of site I was working on uh, where I got this picture from. So we got our main point of focus up here. But because it's a boudoir picture, we also have the secondary focus down here. Let's not kid ourselves on this. So we got this horizontal line that runs right through the middle of her chest and then right down through her legs. And so this makes this a secondary focal point. 
So if we were to turn on our golden ratio, you're going to see everything right over here over her face, right where it should be. And then you also have these lines even coming through and just bisecting right through the middle of her eyes, ending up on her cheeks on either side. But if we flip this now and we make it so that it's down on the bottom of the page, and this will take me a second to flip both of them. And now we got to flip horizontal. You're going to see that the secondary interest point on this on this image is right down here over her chest, which again is the focus of this image. So let's turn that off and let's take a look at this image here. And in this case here, let me see, I want to flip these again and let me get them back up to the top. Now in this case on this page, what you see here is I actually pulled the image over because it was down here further and the whole focal point was like right over here. And I thought, well, okay, so this, I mean, not every image is cropped perfectly. And so I thought, well, if I just pull it up this way a little bit, we can get it so that these are all in the right place. And again, as we turn on our colors, we're going to see that everything is lined up the way we would want it to be. So on the next one here, I also moved this one around a little bit as well. Let me turn a few of these other things off. Because the dog was, I mean, this is a dog site, just like the last one was a dog site. And a dog training site, I think. And so what I did is I just pulled the image up this way a little bit more. And made the dog more of a focus along our rule of third line right there. And then I also looked at it and said, okay, well, there's kind of an artificial horizon right here where their feet are. All three of their feet really are at this point. So I pulled this up a little bit just to have their feet be right there. And so then let's turn on everything and let's just take a look at it again and see what we got. Now it's not perfect because it's kind of the focal point here is kind of large, whereas a lot of people or a lot of times you'll have it where just a uh, one per a person's eye is like right here in the middle. This is, but it is also balanced as to where it is. If you look here, you have the woman and the man equally balanced on either side of this section right here and the dog completely below it. So I think that that's a great picture lined up like that as well. And then let's look at la one last one here in that this one actually is lined up virtually perfect on its own because you got the dog right here and we know that this is going to be the yellow section right there so we got the dog right there and the man next to the dog right exactly where you would want your vortex to be and including the fact that i just noticed this right now i've been looking at this picture a hundred times is the sun is here as well as part of the most important part of this image now, before we move on, I want to apply everything we've been looking at here to that original image that I was asked to show how it worked. And so here is the original image. And so then let's just apply everything that we know to this. Okay, so first off, let us turn on our golden ratio. And you see right now, we take this top part right here, her head, her face, everything is like centered right in the middle of this top rectangle. Now let's put in the secondary one. Again, same thing here. The uh, intersecting lines right there, right on the corner of her, her hairline right there. And then we can uh, put in our red dots, our blue lines. Let's leave the blue lines and the red dots off. And then we'll look at, just do it this way. Oops, not what I wanted. Okay, we'll do it this way. So now we have the one golden ratio and we have everything that's important here. But what do we have in here? It includes the pizza and everything else. So we turn that off. So we got the pizza, the pizza box, her face. And then we can look at the green ones. And same thing here, comes right around, takes advantage of her face and everything right there. The only thing that we're missing out on is the hand on the pizza. But realistically, her face is really the focal point of this image. Okay, so now I'm going to just go through a bunch more images real quickly here, but we're not going to lay everything over the top of it because you get the idea. You know that right here, right up in here, all the way across into here is the most important parts on these images. So let's take a look at this one here. Where's the problem that we have? They're completely not 
on any of the lines. I mean, not even close to any of the lines here. But uh, so then this one here, again, we know was on the lines. This one was on the lines. This one here, again, not. This one here, not. Now, do I use these in my final result here? Yeah, it's this image right here and this image right here. So they can work just fine if you're incorporating them into a web page or into another image or something else, but just as a standalone image, they frankly weren't really cropped in the way that us as humans want to see an image cropped. Now, in order to show you the next couple of images, what I'm gonna to have to do is every time is pause it a little bit just to be able to change the grid here because we want to be a third width on these narrower images whereas the grid I had set up was for the entire width of what you see here in the background. So again I changed this one out already and you see here now the the uh, the vertical line coming down right here right through the corner of her eye right through the corner of her lip through her chin right where we have our vortex or our yeah our vortex right here and then right straight down her body. Okay, now that I have this one lined up properly, you're going to see here again the vertical line coming down right here, which would basically be the corner of her eyebrow, right through her hairline, and then right through this tattoo she has on her back, actually going through the high point of the tattoo, and the horizontal line running through her eye and right across the bridge of her nose. And we're going to take a look at this picture again, because the last time I looked at it, I didn't really have my my thirds lined up properly. So again, if we look at this here, this uh, vertical line comes right down, th right through the middle of her eye and bisects right here, right on her lips, right there in the middle. And then again, we have our line running right through the middle of her chest. And again, the vertical line coming right down here. And again, like I said, this is a boudoir picture. And so that is probably, well, definitely the secondary focus point on this image. Now, I said earlier in the presentation that really the most important thing that people look at are faces, eyes, especially pretty women's faces, babies, puppies, dogs, things like that, and where people are looking. And so that's why in this case here, when I moved this image up, it brought the dog's head really into the focal point of the page. And the same thing here, we got the dog really here as the focal point, like certainly much more than he had been where he was moved over to the right. And again, here the dog is the perfect focal point. So now let's just take a look at how we can apply some of this to web pages. And there's one of the groups that I'm in, people are always posting the redesigns that they're doing. And I saw a couple of these images the other day and I said, okay, some of them are good, some of them aren't. So I figured I'd just do a little critique on them. And so like this one here, first thing I see here is, okay, so we have an attractive woman standing here. Okay, that gets my attention. But where's she looking? She's looking off the page. And this uh, call to action button here is kind of where it shouldn't be. It should really be, again, at the focal point right there. So let's just take a look at this. I will turn it off. And what I did is I just basically grabbed this image and chopped it up into pieces and moved parts of the pieces around. So it's not going to be perfect, obviously. But this is what I came up with, is I just moved this gal over here to the right-hand side. She's looking into the center of the picture. And now we got our call to action right there. And if we put on the golden ratio, again, it comes perfectly in here. And if we were to colorize it, of course, this entire area right here would be the focal point of the image. And so she's like smack dab right in the middle of where that big blue box would have been if I was including that on these images. So now let's just do this and let's open up a couple more things here and I'll close down a couple. And so now here's another image uh, from that same group. And again, the woman, she's looking the right way on the screen this time, but she's too far off to the right. And again, the button is not on the proper focal point. So all I did is I moved her over, moved the button up a little bit, and I think this looks better than what we had before like this. So I think that's a better place to do everything. So now let's look at one more here. And so here's the original picture, and I just thought, okay, all we need to do is move her over. So I grabbed this part over here that was blank, and I stitched it onto the right-hand side, and I moved her over, and I think that's a much better picture right there. You just have to drop your call-to-action button right there, and away you go. 
So let me see what do I have next here. This one here is actually a good example because my, my horizontal rule of thirds here are obviously off because we have so much blank space here. So if I were to have this here and then I put it in the proper place, it would pretty much come right through the word guide right here. So we got our vertical coming right down and our horizontal will come through about right in here. So this is actually a really good example of focusing your eye right on the title of that book. So let's grab another one. And in this case here, what we talked about earlier is that the center part of the screen is not where you want anything that is going to be your focal point. And again, you got this person standing here without a shirt on. You got a face. You got eyes looking at you. He's looking towards the center of the screen. This has to be one of the focal points on the page. So what I did is I took him moved him back over here further to the left, lined him up right on the vortex point there, and then I took the the text that was over here, that was over here behind him, I just chopped it out, and I moved it over here, and I repositioned the button, and again, I think this layout is much more effective, at least from the standpoint of golden ratio and the rule of thirds. And here, in this image, all I did is I just moved the guy over a little bit and let it be. You'd have to resize resize the text. And then we got one last one here. And so this picture really isn't bad. It uh, is lined up here more or less with the word yoga. That's all good. But I thought, wouldn't it be better if we had the woman on the line and the word yoga behind her? And so that's what I did is I flip-flopped it, moved it over, moved her over, moved yoga behind it. And then you'd have to take your button and move it down here a little bit, which I obviously forgot to do. Okay, so by this point here, I probably have you pretty well convinced that rule of thirds and golden ratio, you want to keep them in mind whenever you're looking at images, taking pictures, cropping anything, or building any kind of a web design. So here are a couple of the pictures that I took off the page that I built. And so we're just going to look at them again, how they line up. Now, originally this picture wasn't necessarily very good because all the action was in the middle, not on the thirds. But when you build your blue box in the back, and you're going to see as we get into this that I show you the actual training on how to build this. We're going to put content in here. We're going to have text. We're going to have, you could have a video in here maybe. That probably wouldn't work out so well. Uh, but mostly it's going to be text and a button or something like that. Um, when you do that and then you look at how we build it and use the formula that I came up with, you're going to find out that everything is going to line up perfectly exactly on our rule of thirds. And let me see here. Do I have my, yeah, I do have that in here too. So it lines up as far as the vortex goes. All right, let's move on to the next image then. So again, here we have the same image we saw before, which again, this was one that did not really meet our requirements as far as golden ratio or the rule of thirds. But again, if it's placed correctly inside of the rest of this section here, then it will line up perfectly exactly where we want it to. And again, let's throw this on top of it and it's perfect there as well. So now let's just take a look at one more. Again, lines up right on her cheekbone, right there in the middle. And then let's do this and then we will flip it around. Um, not uh, vertically, we don't wanna vertically, do we? No. Yes, we do want it vertically. There we go. Yeah, and it come again, perfectly there. If we were to shrink this down, the golden ratio down, it actually would probably just come right around the top of her head, perfectly around the back of her body, and it would be absolutely perfect for this. I mean, and that, and, but this is one of those cases where is this is just a great image. Ever since the very first time I saw this image, I said, that is a great image. So let's go and take a look at one more. Same thing here. Everything lines up. Let's just keep going forward here. So again, we got perfectly lined up there. And here again, right on her cheekbone, right down through the tattoo. Now you're going to notice a little bit off from what we had on the other image, but we were just doing the image itself. Now we have to incorporate the entire web page. And we're still right on there, right on her cheek, right on the corner of her eye. And then what else we got next here? Then we got this lady again here, and we center it right here on the corner of her lips again, which is very nice. And then let's just go for our one last one. 
And again here, the horizontal line, I'm sorry, the vertical line coming right down again, right straight through her body, down her arm, exactly where we would want it to line up. So that is it by now. I'm sure I have you convinced that um, doing a little bit of work here and learning a little bit about this is the best thing to do. So now what we're going to do is we're going to jump forward into uh, getting into the editor and showing exactly how to set up these sections, how to set up the images, and the little bit of a formula that you need in order to figure out exactly how to place everything on the screen. Okay, so you're going to remember this picture here. Obviously, this is what got me started on this little project about a week or so ago. And uh, again, what I, I, I came back here, and I came back to this a number of times, and I finally, after building out everything else, I came back and I checked something on it, and I was like, holy cow, this matches up exactly to what I built. So let me just grab a hold of what the final almost final result is here. And so here we go, we got all these different images all lined up, and whether you can tell it or not, if you were to come down here, they're all lined up right along the same axis, right along that one third line, all the way down. And I'll show you exactly how I figured that out, and then also how to figure out the width of the colored background of the row here in order to do it. Now, let me, uh, before we go into that, let me just tell you one thing. And this was really the first thing that I figured out, which was, and I don't know where this comes from. It just kind of popped into my head one day and I don't know where it came from, but I just said, okay, well, what these need to be is they need to be 25% of the perpendicular side of the image. So if you were to take the entire height of this image and divide it in four, that is this width right here. And like I said, I built out absolutely everything. I did my formulas, all that stuff. And then I came back and I actually put a ruler on this entire image here and I looked at it and that is exactly what it came out to be. Not only does it line up right on the rule of thirds, not only does it line up right perfectly on the golden ratio, but also, this distance right here is 25% of the total height of the image. And this distance right here is 25% of the entire width of the image. And that's what I had built out before I came back in yesterday and actually measured all this. So like I said, I don't know where it came from. I've had a lot of math in my background. I've had a lot of photography and video in my background. So did it come from somewhere there? I don't know. It just popped into my head and I was like, there's the answer. And that was, like I said, like a week ago. And that's what got me really flying along on this project. So let's close out some of this stuff. And then we are going to go into our, let's just go into a live page right here. And what I like to do is, so here's the live page and I'll show you everything I did on here. But what I like to do to examine stuff is to come into the page and let's just go into this page here. We're going to right click and inspect. And then once we get into the inspector, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the mobile view, which is this little button right up here in the corner where it's got like a little phone and a tablet looking thing. And we're going to go into this page here, but I already had one open, so we'll just forget that one. So here we are. And the next thing you want to do is come up to the top here and set this to 1440. You can click along here and come up with different widths. So set it to 1440 and also make sure this is set to 100%. What I found is sometimes you do stuff, you'll move the screen around and all of a sudden this isn't 1440 anymore and this isn't 100% anymore. So in order to do what we're gonna do here, make sure to set there or you're gonna struggle with your numbers. And I literally spent hours in the last week chasing ghosts because I didn't realize that this flipped to like 95%. And my numbers just were not coming out right. And I knew, I knew they should work, and they didn't. And that was only because this had changed up here at the top. Now, what I want to do is I want to break down what I did on this page here. And then after that, we're going to go in and show how the code goes. Because I think if I show you the practical side of it first, it's going to make a lot more sense. So the first thing we want to look at is, is this actually working right? Are these people lining up the way that they should as far as the, in this case here, we're just strictly looking at rule of thirds. But as we know, if the rule of thirds were to come through her eye right here like this, we know that 
this entire area would be covered with that colored part that you saw earlier in the presentation. So if we're going to look at this woman here, let's just roll down. I put it right on her eye, which is where I lined it up for the rule of thirds. And we're going to come down, and this is the same, same gal right here. Boom, right through her eye again. And then right down through this woman here, right onto the side of her face. Now, if we come over here with this lady right here, I, uh, I lined it up so that this eye was in here, and I'll show you why I did that a little bit later. And then we'll scroll up, and it comes right up here through her eye, which is where, again, I told it to line up on her eye. I could have, as I did um, with the, the image themselves when we were just looking at them, we were looking at, okay, well, we got this high point here on her tattoo coming up and hitting the corner of her eyebrow. I could have lined it up there just as well. So you can line it up really wherever you want to line it up. But in this case, I did choose just to go on her eye. And then with this gal up here at the top, um, it goes right here right on the corner of her eye, right on the corner of her eyebrow, which is exactly where I wanted it to be. And what's funny is I was doing this, I took this picture here, I think off of a site for uh, men's formal wear for like weddings and stuff. And this one came, I think she runs some sort of food coaching program or something. And I started looking at these two and I was like, is that the same woman? It certainly could be, but I really, really doubt if it is unless this woman was doing modeling. But it certainly could be the same woman. I don't know. They're just stuff I pulled out of my image library. So up here at the top, so we have the blue section here. Blue, I sh I'm going to have to make sure I say this right. This is a row. This is the background of a row, and so it's inside of a section. So the section color here is this, well, actually, it's a transparent background. So it's picking up whatever was behind it. So that is the... This is the section out here. This is the row. And then inside of the row, it's a two-column row. So one column has this text and stuff. One column has the image. And then what we do is we actually say, take this column and then push it over and then down. So we don't move just the image. We move the entire column. It's a lot easier to do it that way. A lot less code. Now, the next thing we do is we're going to look at this and go, okay, do we want to put any kind of content into this row, into, in particular, in this column. Do we want to put it in here, or do we want it to just be completely blank? But it's up to you. But the reason we do this, the reason why we put in our content first, is because we have to calculate the height of this row. So if you just leave the content blank, then you can come in and say, okay, well, I want my row to be 300, 400, 500, 600, whatever you want in pixels, you can just say, okay, I want my row to be that tall. Because then the next thing we do is we say, okay, that's what we want the image to be as well. So we want the image to be the exact same height as the row itself. So if I were to undo the CSS on here, this would be in here perfectly right framed right inside of that row right there. Now what I also did here, and again, you wouldn't probably do this. You're probably going to put one or two of these on a page. You're not going to jam five or six of them together like I have here for my example. But what I also did here is I took this lower section and I gave it a negative top margin and I pushed it up and it went up behind this image. So we got a nice overlap there that looks pretty cool that you could do, um, of course, anywhere you wanted to. And then again, the same thing down here. We created a column, we put some content into it, we, we determined its height, then we determined, or then we gave the image the exact same height, and then we pushed that column that the image is in to the left and up. And then I said, well, hey, let's try putting some content underneath it. So this, this box right here, this, this image is totally editable. So when I mouse over it, it turns orange, you get a little plus button at the bottom, and I said, okay, let's put in a headline and a button. And boom, that's how it lined up. So it came out pretty nice. So now let's just keep scrolling down the page. Oh, and in this case here, so here I put in this gray background. And then down here at the, the bottom again, what I did is with this section, I put in a textured background. And again, put in a bunch of negative top margin for the section and pushed it up so that this lady was then up over the top of the gray, and again, took the whole column, pushed it over and up, 
and then put some content over here to the right hand side. And once we go into the um, iPad mode of 1024 pixels wide, you're going to see that all this stuff actually lines up really well. I was surprised how nicely most of it lines up. So then here we got another section. And uh, with this one, a section I just did an image on the background. And then same thing with the row, gave it a little bit of inner shadow there. Same thing up here, inner shadow. This image has a little outer shadow on it. And then uh, again, just put her in there with a little, little drop shadow on that, outer shadow, drop shadow, whatever you want to call it. And then here, I didn't even put any content in. So again, here in this case, I just said, um, let's make this 600 pixels tall and made the image 600 pixels tall as well. So the row and the, and the image, same height. And then again, took the next section down here, pushed it up so that she broke the plane again. And so all throughout here, you get all these different overlaps going along it. And this one here, actually, I think is probably the one that turned out the best that you got the overlap upon the overlap. And I, I really like the way that one looks. And then this one here, I really like a lot as well. So here again, I just took the entire section in the back, dropped in this, um, this brick pattern in the back of it. And I just happened to have put in a, a red color here that was partly opaque and all the brick came through and I was like, wow, I really like that effect. I'll tell you, I swear most of the time when I get like the best stuff and look, the best stuff and look, the best looking stuff is when I do something purely by accident and I go, wow, that really looks pretty cool. And then this button right here, this is actually a built-in function in ClickFunnels. Um, I think it's called Glow or something like that um, on a button effect. And I thought, wow, that actually turns out pretty cool. And I thought the colors and everything looked really good with this black and white image. And then the very last one here, I said, okay, well, how much content can I jam in here? And I said, well, okay, let's put in a headline element at the top. We will give that a big uh, negative top margin. I think a top margin of negative 10. Dropped in this text box, put a border around it, an inner shadow on it, and then the rest of it down here. So now let's take a look at what this looks like when we go into an iPad mode. Now I'm going to show you the iPad mode here, even though a lot of people don't have iPads, uh, we still, I always think you got to make sure it looks good at 1440 and 1024. And again, what we're doing here is only going to work on desktop and for mobile it's going to be completely turned off and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But what we got here then is so, I mean, the headline doesn't look bad, um, actually looks okay and you can read it just fine. This looks okay. But we get down here to the bottom and starts pushing some stuff off. So you got to look at it and go, okay, you know, how can I work this out? Maybe what you do is uh, in, well, like in this case here, I made, I made the boxes and everything. And then I came along and I tried to put some content inside of it. In your case, make the box, make the box, make the, uh, the, the row, make the row, put all the content into the row, get all your spacing done right, all that kind of stuff, and then size the image, size the row, do all the stuff that we need to make it, uh, make it look right in the end. That's probably the best way to go, unless you just want solid color with nothing inside of it, which I think is perfectly okay as well, depending on what you're trying to go with on your site. So let's go to 1024 again. Now here's a situation where, again, this looks fine, but maybe this experience Nirvana needs to be up higher. Now you could take this column here and you could give it a Z index of like nine, let's say, and pull it more forward. So Z index is always front to back and everything else on the page should have a Z index of one. So if you do a Z index of nine, it'll pull it to the front and it would go over the top, but then you'd have these letters over the top of the image. So you're probably better off putting this up here a little bit higher if you wanted to keep it like this. But always what you're gonna have is whatever's on the right hand side is going to go over whatever is on the left hand side, unless you use the Z index and tell it otherwise. So here, there's nothing to really see on that one. This one here, again, I think turned out really great because again, here I was using that red that I had made partially transparent. And then when you do that, you still get to see her arm and hand and stuff coming through and you see the edge of the black image right there. So again, it's one more intersecting overlaying layer that I think looks pretty good. 
And then here, this isn't horrible, actually, considering we've got so much stuff jammed in here. But you'd have to probably um, either uh, maybe make this uh, the text give it a lot more padding on the side. I mean, the, the headline doesn't look bad. But this here, you're going to lose these words right in here. So you either have to bring this in much more skinny or you're going to have to put a... A background behind this so you can actually see what that says and here's the thing is is we're not in mobile view yet so you can't change it from desktop to mobile right inside of the editor you're actually going to have to build it this way for desktop because uh, the breakpoint for mobile is 770 pixels and here we're at 1024 so it wouldn't automatically pick that up and here again we're not looking bad we probably have to bring all of this up some because we're pushing this too far off the bottom. But again, like I said, best thing to do is drop in a row, put in your content, get your content looking the way you want, and then when we got it, when we got all the content right, then that's when we start dealing with the images. Because the images can be, it basically is all put in at the end after you determine the height of what this row is going to be. Okay, so now let's start taking a look at some of the bits we need to get to uh, start building this thing. And the first one we're going to need to know is, so we got all of our content put in here. First thing we need to know is how tall is this column. So let's just right click on it and inspect it. I said column, again I meant row. How tall is this blue row? And so we're going to come up here to where it says row. And you can see how it highlights it and all the... Uh, what is the margin on the right hand side and we're going to click on this and then we're going to come down and we're going to come to computed and it's 975 pixels wide by 600 tall now again what i said is when i built this i built it without any content in it because i had to you know basically figure out proof of concept here to see if i could get this to work right or not so I just gave everything a just a generic number. So your number might come out to be 593 pixels. For all I know, once you get everything built exactly the way you want. But what I would do is give it a little extra top and bottom uh, padding uh, whenever possible. So we're 600 pixels in our in our height. So always when you look at numbers like this, the first number is always your width. It's always the x-axis, it's always the horizontal, where the second one is always your height, your y-axis, or your vertical is how this lays out. So we know that this is going to be 600 pixels tall, so that means that we need to make our image also 600 pixels tall. So now I want to go into the builder and just start taking a look at this uh, very first one that we're working on here. And then at the end, I'm going to go through and build out an entire one from scratch to show you everything. So here we are. We got our row. And what we're going to do to build our row, let's just start off here. So what I have here is we're going to put in, we have a section. And that section has probably about 100 pixels of top margin just to push it down. The only reason I did that is just to give us some space so we weren't jammed up against the top. And then we have a background color of transparent, so there's nothing in there. Text color is really irrelevant. And I gave a padding of 100 at the bottom, again, just to give us some room down here. But then I did kind of overlap everything anyway. And then what else do we have here in a section? Absolutely nothing. So then in the row, we had, uh, what I did is I gave it just this blue background color. I just happened to have that in my palette. And then here on most of these, what I did is I set them all to 75. So that one got moved a little bit, so we're, we'll just set it as 75. So when you first start building it, just set them all to 75 because the code will take care of changing the width for you. Because you see, as I move that, it didn't do anything. It's because the code has it fixed at what ever width it is that we needed to get this thing to line up properly and then let's see here advanced nothing else so that's really all you got to do is put in a color and set it to 75 percent oh in this case here we want to float it to the left you could float it to the center i don't know why you would and then we can float it to the right as you can see like this one down here is floated to the right but in this case we floated to the left so then the question becomes is right or left which one do you do it well, it all depends. In a case like this, where this woman is looking this direction, you obviously can't put her on the right-hand side, but you could put this woman on either side 
And as we go forward, you're going to see we could put her down here at the bottom or we could put her pushing out of the top. That would be perfectly fine. Could we put this woman down here lower? Maybe. You just got to try it. Got to put it in there, see how it looks. Same thing with her. Could we put her down here? Yeah, maybe. Um, but that's... Uh, but, but with this woman, woman here, you would not put her on the right-hand side. She definitely, again, has to be on the left-hand side. The same with this one here. She has to be on the left-hand side as well. And this woman here, again, looking to the left, she needs to be on the right-hand side. But this one here, again, could go on any one of the four corners of your row, and that would be perfectly acceptable. Okay, so then inside of each one of these rows, I just put in some content, as you can see. And then on this side here, I just put in an image. So let me go into the CSS real quick, and let me turn off what I have in here that puts her where she is sitting. And actually, I just think I can just do that, and we will get out of that, and here she is. So like I said, she's 100% the height of the row, and she's taking up the entire width of this column. And then I have this pulled all the way over to the side. If we go any further, it actually starts pushing her off, which I don't know if it would otherwise, but here, we'll just put it there. So if, if everything starts getting distorted or something, you may have to change the width. Can you bring this all the way up here like this all the time? I don't think so. Some of these here, I got a lot more space. But on the other hand is I don't want this necessarily jamming all the way up against the image either. So again, it's one of those things. How does it look? Play with it. Go back and forth. But if you go too far this way, I think you're going to start messing with the image itself. But again, test it. Don't know 100% for sure until you test it. Now here comes the first thing that we have to do a small calculation on is because all these images are not going to be perfectly sized. So in this case here, this image was, was 400 by 600 pixels. So 600 tall by 400 pixels wide. That one came in perfect. This one here did not. So let me show you what we have here. So let's just scroll down on this image. Let's right click. Let's inspect it. And we're going to see how big this image is. And you can see how big it is natively just by putting your mouse over the top of it. Now what we want here is we want it to be 400 pixels tall, which of course is what you see it is set at. But the intrinsic, what the image actually is, the way it was uh, cropped and everything, it is 1596 by 1050 pixels. So we got to figure out how can we translate this into 400 pixels tall, okay? So what we're going to do, it's a very simple formula. So again, what did we have here? This is going to be fun. Let me see here. I'm going to click back and forth. Okay, so 1596 by 1050. So we got here 1596 by uh, 1050. Let me just make sure there's 100% right. All right, 1596 by 1050. And what we want, we know that this purplish section right here, is we want this to be 400 pixels tall because we put in all of our content, we measured it, and it's 400 pixels tall. Now, I guess I didn't show you how to measure it. I'm on a Mac. If you don't have a Mac, if you're using a PC, in Chrome, I know they have extensions that you can use to measure stuff. So there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can do on a Mac, you do Control Command 4, or like I said, you can use a Chrome extension. And you would just come up here, and you just go on here, and you just open up a little box, and you come down, and you go, okay, this is 400 pixels tall. That's one way to do it. Or a better way to do it is come down here, right-click on this row, and in this case here, let's make sure that we are sitting on the row itself. We'll come up here. Again, it says row right there. So we know we have the row. And we'll come in here. If you got your styles turned on, just click on to computed. And it'll tell you exactly how tall that row is. So there's a couple different ways to figure out what the height of the row is so that you can then figure out what the height of the image needs to be. So let's just take a look here. So we got... Uh, 1, 000, or 1596 by 1050, and then on the next line, we want it to be 400 pixels tall. So again, 1596 is our width, 
1050 is our height. We want to translate that into 400 pixels of height. Well, it's very simple. What we do then is we just do our little calculation here. You can see it up at the top. We just got 1596. We divide that by our 1050. And then we multiply our 1050 times our 400. And that will give us our new width. So in our case right here, um, let me see here. I, I know it comes out to 16 or 608, but we got 1596 and we got 1050 divided by that is 1.52. 400 times comes out to 608 on my HP 12C that I've had for 35 years. So, um, yeah, so that comes out to our 608. So now we know how wide this image needs to be. And the reason we want to know those things is because although I normally say do not set the height and the width of an image, in this case here, we want to set both. So with this, uh, this one up here, I said we had 400, and that gives us a height. Well, we knew the height of 600, gives us a width of 400. And then we'll come down to this image right here. And again, we had the height of 400, and now we have our width of 608. So now we have the two most important numbers we need. We only need to make one more, figure out one more number. But like I said earlier, what we're looking at is 25%. So this right here, this section right here, that is 25 or this area from the outside of the end of the row outward. This is 25% of the height of this image. So we know that the height of this image is 600 pixels. So 25% of that, one quarter of that is 150 pixels. So we know we have to have our horizontal offset here be 150 pixels. So then this side down here, you can see it's a lot smaller because this is 25% of our width. Our width we know is 400 pixels. And so therefore a quarter or 25% of 400 is 100 pixels. And that's going to be our vertical offset down this way. And again, like I said, you can do, you can go down 100 or you can go up 100. It's just a matter of putting in, in a negative sign or not. I'll show you that in a second. And then here, could we, instead of doing 25% this side, um, in the original picture, which I just turned off, it, they actually did 25% from this side. So you can really do 25% from either side on some of these images and push them out further. In like a case like this, you would not push this up, basically up to here. So you would not push this way up out, out of this box. You also would not push it all the way to 25% on this side. Just wouldn't make sense. In a case like this, you could push her over because you're really only pushing her over maybe like 100 pixels. So that one would work to push her over a little further. This one, maybe, I don't know. Again, try it. I'll, I'll show you how to do it. Uh, try it, see how it works. This one here, I think you could push over without any problem. And uh, it just all depends on how it's going to line up. This one, doubtful it would work to move it any. I guess you could, you could move it over this way. So basically the edge of it would be right here on the red, be about in this area here. That might work. So either way, you can, uh, you can try it. So let's, uh, let's just jump into the code because there's only a little bit of the code that is for the entire page. And then the rest of it is for each individual image. So the very first line here you see at the top is an at media query. And what that says is that minimum width of 771. So like I said, this does not work on mobile. In fact, I did not show you mobile. Let's just jump into mobile here real quick. So this would be on a tablet. So here we were, oops, where are we here? Okay, so here's 1024. And now we're gonna go down to 768. And here it's going to do what it always does. It's going to take the left column on top, right column on the bottom. And so here's what you're gonna do. So you're gonna to have to redo a bunch of stuff for mobile, even though it doesn't necessarily say that this looks bad. In fact, as you scroll down here, most of this doesn't look bad at all. And we'll just keep going real quick just to show you what it looks like. And this one here, she's just kind of sitting there right in the middle. 
hanging out. And same thing here. This one actually, again, turned out really nice. Um, that looks pretty good. Maybe you want to just move move everything so you got a little padding down here at the bottom with a little bit of the red showing through. And again, here, doesn't look bad to have the words come up over the top of the image and that sitting there like this. So, I mean, in some of these cases here, I mean, I think some of this stuff looks pretty good, but I'm not the greatest designer in the world either. So um, that's up to you great designers to decide how this looks for you. So now let's go back into our code. So again, what we got here says minimum width 771 pixels. So it'll start out as wide as you got it. It'll go down to 771 and at 770 on ClickFunnels, that goes to mobile view. So that's why it says 771 or bigger is going to be what we're going to get here for our desktop. Then we're going to say here container overflow visible. So all of these sections, a section is known as a container or has a class of container. And you see that right here where it's got the class of container. And if you, in my case here, I wanted it for every single section on this page. If you didn't want it for every section, what you would do is you would come in and so let's just say we're going to do section number one. You come in, you click on the gear, and we're going to grab the CSS ID selector. And so let's open this up, and we'll grab that CSS ID selector, and we will copy it, and we'll go back into our CSS. And then what we would do is we would just put that in right there instead of what we had, and then it would do it only for that individual section, not for all of the sections. So let me just put the word container back in there. And now it'll do it for all the sections. And then also what we want here is we want it to be 100% width. So we want it to go all the way out to the outside edge. If we turn this off, you're gonna see you're going to have it centered like you normally would inside of ClickFunnels. But here we will do that. And again, you could put in the CSS ID selector right here where it says container, and but leave the container inner and the 100% width. That way we get all the way out to the edges. Okay, so now let's just take a look at our very first one here. So that's the code right here between the number one and the number two. Kind of makes sense. And again, I just put in here, this is just a comment. Anytime you see anything like this in, in this bluish color, that's always a comment like that if it's got the, um, the, the slash and the star on either side of it like that. It just comments out the content so that, you know, just for us humans to remind us of what the heck we're doing here. So the first thing we do is we grab a hold of the row. So that's the blue part here. So again, we're going to go into our row and we're going to grab that CSS ID selector. And we're going to come down to the hashtag and we're going to grab that right there and then come back to our CSS and put that in because we want this affecting this entire row. And we're going to say here again, our height of 600. So we built the row. We know what height we want it to be, but we also want to set that height because we want to keep the height of that uh, column or height of that row and the height of the image exactly the same. Otherwise, everything's going to get distorted. So we're going to set that height to 600 pixels. And right here, like I said, this here, this is just telling me that that is the size of the image. So that image that we just created, put in there, set the colors and everything. 400 in width, 600 in height. So we want the height of our row to be 600 pixels. Now here becomes the only complicated part, if it's even complicated at all, because I gave you the formula here. And you see what I say here. I say one third of the viewport width, so that's this right here, 33.333% of the viewport width. So it takes the entire width of your of your screen and that and I shouldn't say the screen it takes the entire width of the window so if I pull this down and make it only 1200 pixels wide it'll be 1200 pixels wide if I make it out bigger to 1600 pixels it'll pick up 1600 pixels so what we're saying is just take one-third of the viewport width and again why are we starting with that number because again we want this lining up on our rule of thirds so then from there, we are going to subtract a number and add a number. And I'll show you where those come from in a minute. And then what this is, is a cal calculation. So within CSS, you can actually use these different things 
calculate a number and then give that to the width. So in a case like this, our result from this equation right here, from this cal calculamification, if you want to call it that, um, so this calculation is going to be, let's say, 72.3. I mean, sorry, not 72.3. It's going to give us a number of pixels is what it's going to do. I originally tried to do it as a percentage, and I found out, well, it's going to be easier if I just do it as the number of pixels. So in this case here, let's say the screen is 1,200 pixels wide. This may return a number of 500 pixels, or it might be 800 pixels. You know, depending on where you have this set up, that's the number it's going to give us, and then that's how wide this row will be. So this here is setting the width of this row, the width of the blue part right here. We set the height up here, now we're setting the width. Okay, so now the next part here, we're going to be looking at the image itself. So that's what the IMG is here, that is for the image. And we're going to go into the column now. So we got our row taken care of, and now we're gonna go into the column that this image is setting inside of. So again, in this case here, let's put this back to 1440, and we are going to right click, and we are going to inspect, and we're gonna come up and we're gonna find our column, and then we need to find our col inner. So that's normally where you go to whenever, most of the time whenever you're dealing with columns, but the other way you can find this is, is come into here, into your columns, this is probably the way most people are gonna do it. So this is our second column right here. You see it turned to blue around the outside. We're gonna come in here and we're going to say, we're gonna grab our CSS ID selector again, and we're gonna copy this out. And so then it's call right 153, call inner. And then also that's what you would see right here. So we have call right 153 up here, and then we have call inner right here. So both of them say exactly what we're looking for. Now in this case here, we need to come down to our image. So let's take a look at that code again. And the image is right here. So we have the image right here. And one of the first things we want to do is with click funnels, they're always putting padding around everything. So we want to tell it to get rid of any padding around this image, right, left, top, bottom, wherever it happens to be hanging out. Let's get rid of that. And then also on the call inner itself. So this is the image. Here's just call inner without the image. And we're also saying here, let's get rid of all the padding around there. Because the padding is going to interfere with us making our calculation cal calculations and getting it in the right place. So we always got to get rid of that padding. And then what we're going to say with the image, we want it to have a minimum width of 400 pixels. So again, we got 400. We already set it to 400 and 600. But what I found is as the viewport size changes, it would actually, even though I set it to 400 pixels, it would still move it. It would still make it smaller. So that's why I had to say here, we need to set that minimum width to that 400 pixels. So, so far, all we've done, we've set the height of the row, we set the width of the row, and we set the width of the image itself. So now the tricky bit, if it's even tricky at all to divide a number by four, that's what we get down here. So now we have our top is 100 pixels. So this is just for the column. So like I said, what we do here is we take the column itself and we move it. So let me go over here. So here, here we are, we are all the way off to the side here and let me come in here to column and let me turn on the styles. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off this. So we're gonna move it down from the top 100 pixels or what we can do is we can go the other direction and just by putting a negative in front of it here it will push it up to the top 100 pixels. So right there it's butting up against the top of the screen because we were down 100 pixels. So you can do that either direction right there. And so I'm just gonna say down that much. And then in this case here, we need to move it right negative 150 pixels. Now again, this stuff after this, this is a comment. Let's just go back into our screen here, go back into our CSS. And so here we want to move it right 150 pixels. So again, where did I get this top 100 pixels from? This is 25% of the width 
of the image. So here we have our image width of 400. Divide that by four, give it 25%, gives us 100 pixels. Moving it right and left, we have 150 pixels, and that's because that's 25% of the 600. So in this case here, we have to go right. As we get down here further, the next, the next one down here, it's gonna be exactly the same, except we're going to go left 100 pixels. Okay, different shaped image, that's why this number is different, but here we're going to say left, up here at the top we're saying right. And what that means is we're going to start on the right side of the row that we are in. Okay, because we have the column inner and we are inside of that column. We're going to start on the right side and we're going to go out of it. Okay, so let me let me just do this. Let me skinny this down. Let me see if this will work here. Now, actually, let me do it in the live page. It's going to work a lot better because I have the absolute turned on and all that. So here, here we are and we're minus 150 pixels. So let me just turn this off at first and you're going to see, oops. Oh, I know, I, I have the other offset turned on, so let me... Okay, here's the best way to show you, because I can't show you exactly because of the other offset that we have set in here. But so, we have the right turned off right now, so if I turn it on, it goes to the right 150 because it's negative. So what it does is it starts on the right side, and if we were to say write a positive 150, it would move it away from that into the into the center. So it'll move it actually to the left 150 pixels. But here we're saying it's a negative number, so that'll move it out past the right edge by 150 pixels. So again, if I were to come in here and we can change this here, we can take out that negative and it's gonna push it all the way to the inside. I need to turn it on. Okay, it wasn't working for me for a second there, but that's, so now I have it down here. It says right 150 pixels. So it moved it from this edge over 150 pixels. So if we want to move it to the, to this direction, this would be the negative direction. This is the positive direction. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put that negative sign back in there and it should pop it all the way to the outside if it wants to cooperate with me this time. Let's see here, not quite sure what's going on here. We will do that and we will hit tab and we'll see what happened, there we go. Pushed it over to the side and then we will put in our top again and push it down from the top. See in this case here we're pushing it down from the top 100 pixels and again if we go with our negative because it always pushes away from where where we are here and I guess top is easier to show here so with top it pushes down from the top 100 pixels if I give it a negative number it's going to push it up above negative pixels just like negative margin would do it always pulls the whatever you put the negative margin on it will pull it up same idea here it just pulls it up towards the top so we'll put it back the way it was Okay, so now we have her in the position we need her, but let me put my position absolute back on there. Now there's one last thing we have to do, and we have to calculate what is the width that we want for that entirety of that row. And so, like I said, there's two numbers in here that we just kind of glossed over. So we got, we're taking 100% of the viewport width, and we are subtracting from it 33% of the viewport width. I guess I'm just I'm looking at this here. I, I really don't need these these brackets in here. Uh, but we're taking minus 33% of the viewport width. And actually, I could just make this 67.667. Um, all right, well, if you get the code and it looks a little bit different, that's what I did is I just took... I mean, it took me, it took me a while to figure this one out. Um, so I could just take the 66.667 uh, viewport width and then minus 165 pixels and my, uh, plus 150. Now, where does the plus 150 come from? That's the easy part. That's right here. The right minus 150. We have to compensate for the fact that we moved it right 150 pixels, and we have to tell it to basically move it back 150 pixels or give it, let's say, give it 150 pixels worth of credit for what we had to move it to the right. The 165 pixels 
that comes from a little bit different place. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back into GIMP and show you where that came from. So as you saw earlier, we had all of our images here. And what I did is I changed the rule of thirds on this so it actually would line up properly on this image now. And you're going to see it actually turns out relatively nice, completely frames her face right through the middle of her nose. But an image like this is so narrow and she's right in the middle of the image that, I mean, if we were to do the, actually, let me see if I have it turned on here. Uh, so if we do this, what do we get? This comes right, right here. You know, we said that this section right here is the most important. It comes right down through the middle of her eye. And I started looking at that because I want, the real question is, is where do I want this to line up? Where do I want that rule of thirds to go? Do I want it through this eye? Do I want it through the middle of her nose? Do I want it through her right eye? And I just remembered something from photography and cropping images and that stuff. At least I think I remember it from there. And it was always like you wanted to have the outside eye line up on the rule of thirds. So this eye here would come down, line up right on this rule of thirds right there. Let me turn this off. And that's how they should set it up. So that's what I wanted to do here was to have it line up so that the line would come right here as we do our rule of thirds. It would come right through her eye right there. And so that's, that's how I wanted this set up. And let me go back into GIMP, and I'll just show you a couple others here real quick. Let's look at this one. And same thing here. Where do I want this to come through? As I said, I think as we were first showing it, do I want that line to come right through here uh, at the top of that tattoo, right at the corner of her eye, or right through her eye? In this case here, I chose to go right through her eye, right about there. And then let me see here, what was the last one I was going to look at? Same thing here. I got the rule of thirds on here properly this time. And again, where does this go? I looked at it and I said, okay, the rule of thirds on this image naturally goes right through her eye right here. So that's where I want it to go. So I felt that take the image that I already had and whoever cropped this, whoever the photographer was, is clearly saying to me, this line here is the most important line on this image, so let's line it up right on there. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here, we're going to go to this page, and again, I like to do it here, 1440, 100%, that way I always know what I'm dealing with as far as sizes and stuff, and I'm going to open up Mac again and go to my my uh, little drawing tool here, my, my capture tool, whatever they call it, and we're going to start here on the far away edge. You always want to be on the outside edge when you do this because what we need to do is we got to figure out the distance from this edge to that focal point that we want. So we know in this case here, we want the focal point to be the middle of her left eye. So we're going to start on the outside edge here. We're going to come over and we're going to move it up. And I'm just going to move it up far enough so that we can see what we're looking at. And in this case here, I came up with... 165 pixels. Now make sure you hit escape when you do this, otherwise you're gonna have a bunch of little images st stored onto your desktop. So now let's go into here, let's go back to our CSS, and that's where I got this 165 pixels from. So we need to add back in the 150 that we offset it to the right, but then take out 165 for the amount that we want from the edge of the image to our focal point right there. So now let's just take a look at a couple more of these. And uh, so again, right here, we're going to go Command Shift 4, and we're going to line this up on the edge, bring it over, and I want it lined up right there. And so in this case here, I have 395 pixels. I just round it off to the nearest five because five pixels either way isn't gonna make a difference. So we'll grab a hold of that one. Same thing here. Let's just take a look at this. And what I said is I wanted to line it up right there. So let's come over to the edge, bring it over. And in this case here, I used 200 pixels. And we can keep doing them all. But again, this is one we just looked at again. So same thing here. We wanted it right center on her eye. So let's come down here, come center on her eye, 150 pixels. And then we'll just do this last one here. And then that way you know exactly, oops, what did I do here? 
you know exactly how I got all these images or how I got all these widths. And let's see here, looks like, so let's say 100, 170 probably is what I did on that one. 170, maybe 165. Like I said, I mean, you know, I mean, come on. I mean, what's the difference there? It's probably 165 is probably what I did on that one because I wanted to stay back and more center her her head on the whole thing. And so that's where I get that number from. So that was the entire extent of the math on this is there's really no math. Um, like I said, I'll probably correct this equation. But either way, all you got to do is figure out how far from the outer edge of the image so basically the white side we want to call this here the white side or white space side this over here the white space side the side away from the the row that that is what we figure out how far is it from here to what we want as the focal point and so that's how you do it there and then let's just come on down here for the next one and so for the next image it was 608 by 400 and we did exactly the same thing. Obviously, you need to change out your, col your, your columns here. You need to change out your row. And what I did is I just copied, uh, you know, cloned a bunch of rows, one after another after another. And so it's the same thing all the way down the way. So once you do it one time, oh, I guess the only thing here, let me show you here on the second one. Let me actually click out of here. Because the second one, we go to the left instead of to the right. And actually, let me just show you in the live page. So we will inspect this. A lot easier to show you here. Okay, so again, here is left. If we were to say left 100, it'll push it to the right. Always Again, it always pushes it away from the side that we're calling out. So it would be the left side of this row. It's pushing it inward. So if we come over here and we take out that minus sign, pushes it in, obviously that would not make a whole lot of sense to push it in like that. And then on the top, we do 152 to bring it up. 152, if we were to take it out, then we would push her down like this. And again, depending on how you are setting up your page, how you want this to look, you could actually put, I, I, you know, I had this headline down here, but you could actually put a headline or something above the image as well. So you could push it either way. And the one thing I had said is that we can also take a look here and move these, instead of moving it right, this negative 150, we can move it over um, so that this part here from this corner in would be 150. And how you do that is you have to take the 150 off of the width, which is 400. So 400 minus 150 is 250. So we would make this 250. And what in the heck? There's something weird about this thing here. It's just this one. It's just this one element that keeps messing with me. Was oh, this too funny? Oh, I see. Now that shouldn't do anything. Huh? Yeah, it was all those semicolons in there. Yeah. So here, this was right 250, which is not what I intended, but everything was messed up. Um, so that again, here's right edge, pushes it this way inward. 250 we wanted it going outward 250 and so that way you can do do it in most of the cases you're not going to do that i saw like one or two where i was kind of working with it saying it was okay frankly i prefer it on the inside but if for some reason you had to do it on the outside it's just simply take the width and subtract off the first number you're going to use the negative 150 and it'll give you 250 um, to move it over to the right. Now, as I promised, I said I would do one for you on the fly here. So let's do that just to show the entire process from beginning to end. So let's come down here to the bottom. And what I'd done is I already put one in here, but I just pushed it way down. So let's just move this up a bunch and we'll uh, put this up a little bit closer. So what I did is... Again, the 
section has you can put you can put padding on the section you can put margin on the section you can do whatever you want there but it's the row that we're specifically looking at so with the row i came in and i gave it the uh the same blue background as i used on a bunch of the other ones and in this case here let's just again set it to 75 percent. i was set to 75 just to get started and i put this gal here in the left column and so because she's she's looking inward so we wouldn't want to put her um we wouldn't want to put her on the other side over here also we're going to definitely have to put her up to the top because she's looking downward and so we want to do that so let's float this over to the right hand side so there we are and then in this case here so we could come in and we could put in a bunch of content i'm not going to do that we'll just set a height on this but let's get rid of any right or left padding even though we'll get rid of the rest of the padding here very soon and then as long as we are in here let us grab a hold of the css id selector for that row we will copy that out and again in this case here we have our image and i don't have the height or width set on it yet so let's go in and turn on our css and we'll scroll down to the bottom and so what what do we got here so i can look up here at what i have already so the very first thing we need to put in here is that row so let's paste that in and we will do that all right, so now we're ready to go here. And so now the first thing we know we're gonna need is we're gonna need some height. And in this case here, because I have not put any content in, let's just say for simplicity's sake, we're gonna use a height of 400 pixels, just to make this easy on the math, because we know that 25% of that will be 400. So we know up here at the top, just to, to give us an idea of what our image size needs to be. We're, we know it's going to be some width, don't know what that is yet, and then we know that it's going to be 400 pixels in our height. So we will do that, and we will leave it there. So now what we're going to do is we have to, we don't know how big this image really is yet. So we got to figure that out. So the first thing we need to do is we need to save the page. You can basically do this anytime once you drop that image in there. Come in and save the page. And then we're going to reload over here again in responsive in in mobile inside the inspector make sure it's at 1440 make sure it's at 100 percent it's like i said i spent a whole lot of time wasting time trying to figure stuff out and here is our image so let's right click on our image and inspect that and here we go so we got 1600 by 1000 so let's come over here. We got 1600 by 1000. So we're going to have 1600 divided by 1000 times what we already decided was going to be our 400 again. And then actually, let's just make it 500. Let's just make it 500. I will change what I had already done already uh, just to give us a different number to work with. So we got 1600, 1000 divided by 500 times gives us exactly 800 for our height. And so again, here we had. So what we're going to have now is we're going to have eight. I'm sorry, that's our width. Sorry. Um, so we're going to have 800 width by our 500 on our height. So let's come back into what we're working on and let's set this image. So we have a width of 800 and we have a height of 500. And now let's go into our CSS. And we're going to come all the way back down to number seven. We're going to do a lot of scrolling here, apparently. And so we're going to have ourselves a height of 500. And then we will have our width of 800. Okay, so now let's just copy this calc line just to make it easier. And we'll pop this in here. And like I said, what I, what I can do here, and I will do it on this one, we go 66.667 
and then we will move that out of there. And then already we're going to know um, that this number right here is 25% of our height. So we know that this is going to be 125 and we'll figure out what the offset's going to be in a minute. And actually we can figure out what the offset's going to be right now. So let me just save this because we're going to go right back into here and we're going to look at this image and we're going to say, okay, where do we want this image to be? But before we do that, let us reload the page and let's see, because as I started to come out of the other one, that page, that image looked distorted. So we don't, so we know we got a problem here. Why is this image distorting? Probably because we don't have enough width here. So let's pull this over. Okay. Let's just leave it at that. We'll save it again. Because again, we have not set the width of the row yet. So I should have set the width of the row, but that's okay. Um, we'll get this figured out here. So now let's just reload this. So in whatever order you do this in, um, just make sure, again, this image is looking right. You can clearly see it was not looking right before. And so we're going to go here and we're going to say, okay, we want this basically, when, if you remember when we had the image before, let me see if I can get GIMP to open up. Well, since then I moved the guidelines or the, the grid lines around, but what we had here is it came right down the center of her nose, just about right there, right through the middle of her eyebrows. So that's where I want it to be again now. So let's go back in here and I'm just going to pick a point right here in the center of her eyebrows and we're going to come over and we got to come right to the edge of the image and we're going to say, in this case here, we're going to say it's 445 pixels and so we'll go back into our code and we will give it 445 and we'll scroll all the way back down to number seven again and we're going to say we need an offset of 445 and there we go so now let's get moving on the rest of this so we need to go let's figure out what our call inner here is or the column is we need to figure out this so let's come in we're going to come to our columns and we're going to scroll down until we get to that section we are working on. And it's right here. It's the first column. And we will grab a hold of this. And first off, we're going to take a look at the image. And we're going to say, like we said above here, we're going to say padding of zero pixels and we will make that important otherwise it doesn't turn it on because we're overriding a setting and then we have the width again here we got a width of 800 pixels so we're going to say we want a minimum width of 800 pixels and then we're going to go around here because again up here we had width of 453 pixels we had width right there so that's what we're we're mimicking here and then we will put in that CSS ID selector again this time without the image and then we're gonna say again padding zero pixels you I'll get it spelled right here import tent and we want position of absolute. And then we have here, again, our top is 25% of our width. So 25% of our width is going to be 200 pixels. So we're going to say top. We want it to go up above the picture so we're going to give it a negative number 200 pixels and i can put in my notation later and then we want to go off of the left edge here and we're going to go 25 percent of the height which will be 125 pixels and again we want to go outside of it so we want 125 pixels to the negative and then that should be putting us in about the right place, but it doesn't quite look right on my screen. So one of the things here, I'm going to 
fix the word important. And then I'm going to pause for a second and see where I went wrong along the way. And that's what I get for trying to fix my code on the fly here is um, for some reason it turns out that even though, you know, according to basic algebra, if you put all these together in one line, whether you subtract something first or last or whatever, it should be okay. But in this case here, it wasn't. So use the existing code um, the way I have it laid out here and it will work just fine. And as you can see, um, she's perfectly placed over here to the left-hand side and looks really nice right there. And so now let us just save this and we'll go into our mobile view here. Yeah, she's really kind of smushed over to the right-hand side there. That didn't work out good at all. And now much better right there. Plenty of breathing room and going. I mean, this image is so big, it's virtually going all the way out to the edge, but it still is perfectly placed. You got your 25% of your width here, standing proud above the blue. And here you got 25% of your height, standing proud on this side over here. So that is really it. There's very little math involved. If you have to figure out the ratio here in order to figure out the width, simple formula, width divided by height times the height, height of the new, what you want it to be. So here's the original. This is the original right here. This is the original right here. This is what you want it to be. And I guess I could have simply done the math here. I didn't realize it. 1,600 and... Uh, uh, 1,000 would become obviously 800 and 500. But um, so that's pretty simple math there. And then otherwise in here, all you got to figure out is how tall do you want this column to be? How tall, I'm sorry, how tall do you want this row to be? Once you figure out the height of the row and the image you want to use, you figure out where you want your focal point on your image you measure from the outside edge to that focal point, and then everything else is just plug and play into the code that I have right here. And again, this, this last one, that's the last curly bracket, that has to do with the uh, fact that all of this is all inside of this media query that says it has to be for desktop only. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I haven't decided yet. There may be some bonus material appended to the end, but I don't have that done yet. And so I may just cut this short here and then have you uh, or just put that together into a different video. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and there may be some bonus at the end or not.